My guest, Ross Johnston, was artificially inseminated, raised by two lesbian parents. Ross, if you can make it, anyone can make it. What is going to be the difference maker? We've seen the best moves of the devil. What's about ready to happen in 24? The glory of God is the only solution for where we're at in America. We are living on the moment of the hinge of history in America and the nations of the earth. If you don't understand the storyline of God, you'll never understand the storyline of your own life. All we can do is look at this one man, Jesus, and we say, you are the king of glory. We pray right now for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to reveal the father heart of God. We declare the father's embrace, the heart and love of the father to become the greatest reality over your lives. If you would say yes to God today, get past the apathy, the disappointment, the things that didn't go your way and say, God, I want everything you have for me. I am all in, I am sold out for you. He will take your life to places that you never could imagine. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Go and flow. Is there any hope for this lost generation? Not just the gay community, but the community that's like you were, gave no thought to Jesus, to God. Has the Lord shown you something about the coming greater glory? Well, it's so interesting you asked that, Sid, because when I was praying into 2024, immediately in that moment, Psalm 24 flashed in front of my eyes. And Psalm 24 talks about the King of glory. And so as I was kind of pondering this in my heart, the Lord reminded me of a dream I had two years ago where I saw the state of California, half red, half blue, which was showing there was a division among the people. And then all of a sudden I had this thought, what do the colors red and blue combine to make? And they make the color purple. And what does purple signify? It signifies glory, majesty, his presence. And so I believe Sid in regards to the glory that the glory of God is the only solution for where we're at in California, in America. You see, when the glory of God becomes manifest, everything else goes out the door. Preference goes out the door, denominationalism goes out the door, and all we can do is look at this one man, Jesus, and we say, you are the king of glory. And so I believe, Sid, that the glory of God will be released in 2024 in a measure that maybe we've never experienced before. Today, you lead a ministry that does what the gospel says we're supposed to do. You go beyond the four walls of the church. We are carriers of God's presence and we're carriers of the gospel, which is the only message that has the power to set somebody free. I was in an LGBTQ family that had never heard or spoke the name of Jesus ever before. I'm even thinking of this incredible testimony where I was preaching the gospel at a gathering. There was a girl in the crowd who was literally living a transgender lesbian lifestyle. She did not want to be there. A friend dragged her there. She came up to me and told me the story. She said, I walked into the building and as badly as I wanted to leave, I could not leave. She said, I heard your testimony, Ross, and I heard you share the gospel. And immediately I started weeping and I ran to the front where God delivered me from this spirit. And literally within a matter of hours, Sid, she went from living a transgender lifestyle to becoming a born again Christian who is now on fire for God and in a Bible school. And so I shared these testimonies to let you know, it's really simple. Would we be willing to open our mouth and share the gospel that has the power to set free a human life and a human soul. There was a, a beginning prophetic dream. Tell me about that dream. Well, in 2020, many of us don't like to remember this, but it was a crazy year in America and in the nations. And I remember I had just come back to God because I actually walked away from him for a few years. And the Holy Spirit said, if you don't stand now, you never will. And so I remember I went to a few revival meetings. I met this guy by the name of Joel, and we started to feel this burning desire to see California see revival because there's been so many massive moves of God in the Golden State. And so as we're in this season, a dream comes to us from a friend, from a prophet. And in this dream, Jesus appears. I want those type of dreams, by the way, <laughs> where Jesus appears. I, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> and so Jesus appears to our friend in the dream. He brings him to the water and he says, 
Do you hear the sound of the water? And instantly in that moment, Jesus then says, the ground or the battle in California has been prepared. The victory has already been won. And now is the time for the reins of my spirit. And as soon as Jesus said this, a massive tsunami wave from the Pacific Ocean crashed over the shore. And he knew in that dream that that was symbolic of a wave of God's presence touching California and all the way across the nation of America. So this dream comes to us and we say, you know what? If we've learned anything from our spiritual fathers of Lou Engel and Mondo Matthews and these amazing fathers in the faith, we're going to do the dream. And so that's where it all started for us in California. Tell me about the people that got saved and they were on the way to a satanic sacrifice. Yeah, so we heard this testimony after the gathering. When we do our gatherings, we do open air worship, gospel, baptisms, healing, everything that the Great Commission tells us to do. And I remember as I was preaching the gospel, I looked to my left and I see this couple and I knew immediately that they weren't with us in the beginning of the gathering. And so when I preach the gospel, they're the first two people to respond. And right after that moment happens, somebody on our team comes up to me and says, Ross, I just prayed and talked to this couple right before they responded to the gospel. And they told us that they were on their way to a satanic gathering, a satanic ritual. They heard the worship music, they stopped, and then they heard the gospel and said, you know what, we're gonna surrender our lives to Jesus. And this happened in the Tenderloin District in San Francisco, one of the most chaotic and darkest places in all of America. It was such a significant moment. At these gatherings, how many usually are there? So like you like you asked, we started with a few hundred people at these gatherings. And then when we started, you know, a few years ago, we weren't even trying to start a ministry. Sid, I had never preached a day in my life. They said, who's going to preach the gospel? And I just lifted my hand and I said, I will. Why, why so, did you, why, 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 why did you lift your hand? I had never had an issue with communicating publicly, but in this season of 2020 and 2021, where there was so much tension in America, I literally knew that this was the moment that I was born for. And I knew that God had literally crafted me and created me for such a time as this. And so I felt this pull in my heart to say, you know what? It's time for me to use my voice. And so that's what shifted everything for me. We had this crazy idea where I like to say it like this, Sid. I was like, man, what if we shut down Hollywood Boulevard? And I was laughing, but God wasn't. <laughs> and so we showed up at Hollywood Boulevard in July of 2023 and 2,000 people showed up right there in front of the Walk of Fame, in front of the Chinese theater, 115 documented salvations, 38 baptisms in the church in California proved that we are alive, we are active, and that God is moving in the Golden State. Tell me about your early family life. Yeah, so it starts on day one, right, Sid? I was born by artificial insemination in the city of Los Angeles. And the reason for that is my mom was living a lesbian lifestyle. And so I remember I asked her, mom, you know, how was I born? How was I created? What was that process? And, you know, back in her time, she said she went to a phone book, opened it up and found a lab, walked into the lab and said, hey, I want to be impregnated. I want to be inseminated. They gave her a donor list or a lineup of about 10 men. She chose one. They inseminated her. And I was here nine months later. Just out of curiosity, why did she want to have a child? You know, it's really interesting. I actually asked her recently because I, I wanted to know that question as well. And she said, Ross, ever since I was a young girl, I've always had this desire to have children. But she was around 33 years old and she started thinking, oh, my gosh, you know, my body clock is ticking. If I'm going to have a child, it, it has to be soon. And so that's what really pushed her to come to this place of saying, listen, I might not have a child the way that God designed, but I'm going to have a child. And so that's what led her to ultimately being inseminated. I only know by what I read, but I'm told uh, there is a propensity in people that are gay to have huge father issues in their mm -hmm. life. Um, did you have a father issue by being raised by two lesbians? Yeah, I mean, I always say it like this, Sid. I love my mom. She's been such a phenomenal mom. But when you don't walk in the design of God, you can't walk in the blessing of God. And so the reality is I didn't have an actual father ever in the house. 
And so I began to operate out of an orphan spirit where I had a good life, good grades, good in school, but yet I never felt like anybody actually knew Ross. Like there was a father void in the depth of my soul that I had all the way until the time I was saved. I want you to pray. Um, the biggest need is not just within the gay community. I think the biggest need is for people that have had father wounds that hmm. is kind of interfering with their full relationship with Father God. Is this something that you have passion to pray for people? Absolutely, because sometimes what happens, unfortunately, is due to a lack of a father or not a good father, we then think God is like that, right? And I say it like this, Sid, God is not just a good father, he's a perfect father. And unfortunately, many of us, none of us have experienced a perfect father outside of God. And so let's just pray right now. Is that what you want me to do, Sid? Yeah. Would you mind if I pray? Yeah. Awesome. So Lord, we pray right now for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to reveal the father heart of God right now. And I just declare over every person watching or listening that the orphan spirit that has tried to grip your life would leave right now in Jesus name and never come back. And so we declare the father's embrace that even as you're in your car, in your house, wherever you're at right now, that from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, you would actually begin to experience the manifest presence and love of God. So Holy Spirit, be released right now. Touch hearts, touch minds, and touch bodies. And so we declare the heart and love of the Father to become the greatest reality over your life starting today in Jesus name. Today, you, I, you, you have become a normal believer, which many people would call radical. I would call it biblically normal. You've become a normal believer. Do you remember or was there a first time you thought about God, you thought about Jesus? Um, how did that come into the picture even. Yeah. Well, I mean, growing up in our household, we weren't anti-God. It's just we had never had a conversation about God. I mean, I had literally, I had never been to a church, never heard a worship song, never heard a, a sermon. I mean, zero grid for God. And so I remember I was 15 years old. A friend said, hey, do you want to come to church? I said, absolutely. I, I had nothing to lose. I'm sitting in the back row. And for the first time in my life, Sid, I felt the presence of God. Now, at the time, I didn't know what that was. But now looking back at it, I actually felt the presence of God. I went home that night and I remember having my first ever conversation or dialogue with God. And really what I was saying as I look back on it now is, God, please don't let me be a good person who reads a good book and goes to a good church. God, I have to know you. And so the next week after I had that moment in my room, the pastor says, do you want to give your life to Jesus? I raise my hand, become born again. And now I was a Christian. And did your mother have an opinion on that? Well, it's really interesting because in the beginning, I was too young to drive. So guess who had to drive me to church? <laughs> <laughs> so my mom would drive me to church, go back home and then come pick me up. And she, you know, the thing I love about my mom, she has never once come against me. She's only supported my faith. And that's been such an encouragement to me. And so it's a really unique situation because when you think of the church and the LGBTQ community, you typically think of this big gap and a ton of tension when in my case, in my circumstances, my mom was never against it. She just never personally engaged with Jesus. You've become a, a wonderful teacher of the word. I see your passion. I see your, your heart for God. I feel just like you felt the presence of God that first time you walked into a church. I feel that same presence of God on you as we're talking right now. Is there one teaching right now that is achieving the best results when you speak. Absolutely. There's something that I really feel the breath of God and the Holy Spirit breathing on in this season. And what that is, is so many times in our culture and in the world we live in today, we've been taught or sometimes we even believe that it is normal to rebel against God. But I've had this thought beginning to be birthed inside of me where it's actually more normal and it's in 